It can't happen. The matter is just going to sit there until something puts it into motion. So that energy and also the intelligence that creates the material laws. Huh? Why do objects fall down? Why don't they fall sideways or round and around or something like that? Huh? Who made that law? Why is Planck's constant, you know, 10, 3.8 times 10 to the 17th or whatever the heck it is? Huh? Why isn't it something else? Why isn't it 42? <laughs> well, because the Lord designed these laws and he also enforces these laws that every piece of matter in the universe has to follow those laws. You can't break the laws of nature. So every topic in Vedanta Sutra has some application in today's world, in today's situation. Uh, because there's only a certain number of bogus philosophies. Human beings aren't that intelligent. So the same bad arguments and the same uh, foolish reasoning has come up again and again and again in the history of human thought. There really is nothing new under the sun. So every nonsense philosophy that we have today was created and dreamed up by somebody long ago. And in Vedanta Sutra, Vyasadev, the incarnation of God, actually goes through and refutes every single one of those bogus philosophies with evidence from the Vedas. So if you know Vedanta Sutra, you can counteract or defeat any kind of false argument coming from any side uh, or, or any background because you know well, what is the absolute truth and what are all the arguments against the absolute truth and how to defeat that? So the first half of Vedanta Sutra, the first two adhyayas, are all about all the different bogus philosophies in the world and what's wrong with each one of them. And then the second half is very wonderful because uh, it talks about devotional service, how to perform devotional service, and the results of devotional service. And there, there are many confidential topics in there that every devotee needs to know in order to, to, to attain perfection. So this Vedanta Sutra has to be published. It has to be available for the devotees in order to follow Srila Prabhupada's instructions, uh, in order to actually attain the result of all of this devotional service cultivation. So I said, okay, nobody else is doing it. <laughs> I have to do it. Huh? So I got all of the sources together, all the information together, and I like dedicated four months out of my life to go through it and publish it and get it out there. And so now this is available. So I thought, well, it would be a good idea to make this available to the other devotees as well. So I contacted a website, a very popular website, that has devotee news and um, different topics of interest to the Vaishnavas. And I said, uh, you know, here's a link to our site where we have all the material on Vedanta Sutra, and you can study this and all like that. And guess what? They refused to publish the article. They didn't publish the article. And the reason they gave was that they had to review the book. Okay? Now, if you go on this website, <laughs> every day there's a half a dozen articles of gossip uh, about who did what to who and, and who's doing this and who's doing that and blah, 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 blah. And does the editorial staff of this website do they fact check every single article? Do they go to the, per to the people who are named in the articles and get some verification or some, uh, you know, the, some evidence, either pro or con, the, the uh, point that's being made in articles? No. And they don't review the books that they're advertising either. Just recently they advertised a book, and the author of the book, he, he wrote several articles 
on exactly that thought. Uh -huh. And it even uh, contains descriptions of impersonalistic kirtanias and stuff like that, and that is no problem. Oh, you mean that kirtan the book? Yoga of kirtan. Oh, yeah, that's why he's getting invited to speak at the yoga centers. Yeah. yeah. So, obviously, they didn't review the book uh, because they, they accept this guy as being a bona fide disciple of Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. But they don't accept us. Why? Because we do not subscribe to the, the group think. Uh, but let me go back and explain. When Srila Prabhupada came to the West, he was speaking about very high Vedic philosophy. You can read uh, some of Prabhupada's lectures from 1966 and 1967 in New York, and he's talking about very high philosophy to people with no background whatsoever in Vedic language or philosophy or practices or whatever. He was giving something completely new. So, of course, they misunderstood it. But these same people who misunderstood Prabhupada's teachings later on became the leaders of ISKCON and the Hare Krishna movement. So most of the devotees did not hear directly from Srila Prabhupada. They heard from the leaders of their temples. Huh? because they would go to class every morning and every evening, you know, the, the, the program was quite strict. You had a class in the morning, at least one in the morning, sometimes two or three, and, and another class in the evening. And you had to hear from the person who's explaining. And usually the, the person who's explaining was one of those first devotees, uh, because that's how you became a leader in the ISKCON movement, is that you were one of the early devotees and you had some personal association with Srila Prabhupada, and because of that, you got some reputation. And then, of course, you're opening temples and preaching and traveling around. And so like that. But these people were not preaching from a perfected understanding. They were preaching from an approximate understanding. Huh? We call this misduplication. We say there are four stages of understanding any teaching. The first is duplication. That means you make an exact copy in your mind of what the teacher is giving. Uh, so if you don't start from an exact copy, then your conclusions are going to be wrong. Your thinking is going to be wrong. Because the next stage is called understanding. And understanding means that you think through the philosophy with your own intelligence until you come to the same conclusions. Once you do that, then you can actually contemplate the philosophy huh? because you, you will appreciate the beauty and the logical necessity of the reasoning. And then finally, you'll realize the philosophy, which means you'll actually get the result. Your consciousness will change. Huh? We talk about consciousness a lot. Why? Because the devotees changed the definition of the word consciousness when they uh, heard from Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada is talking about Krishna consciousness. Huh? He uses this term, I don't know how many thousands of times in his books and lectures. Krishna Consciousness. This is the Krishna Consciousness Movement, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. But if you hear the devotees talk about consciousness, they sort of define it as thinking about Krishna, or talking about Krishna, or hearing about Krishna. Uh, but as we have discussed so many, 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 many times, Hearing about, or talking about, or even knowing about something or someone with words and symbols is not the thing itself. The map is different from the territory. Huh? Any description that I make with words is a map. It's different from the thing I'm actually describing. 
Huh? I can say water, 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 but I'm just going to get thirsty. Huh? But if I take a drink of water, then my thirst is satisfied. So I can say Krishna, 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 Krishna all day. But unless I'm actually directly conscious of Krishna, it won't have the desired effect. Our consciousness has to be directed towards Krishna. And please don't ask me, how can I do that? <laughs> it's your consciousness. <laughs> you know, it's like somebody asking me, how do I ride a bicycle? Can you explain how do I ride a bicycle? Well, yeah, you get on and you push the pedals and you somehow or other don't fall off. <laughs> you have to practice it. I can sit here and explain how to ride a bicycle till the cows come home, but unless